Well, hello and welcome to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. Thanks so much for joining us on this Wednesday, March 1st of 2017. My name is Pete Connor. I'm your show's host. and We've got a great show for you today. Uh, we will have, first, Nancy Ness, the Executive Director of the Steele County Food Shelf, and it's important because this is March 1st and uh, uh, Food Share Month uh, commences today. And then we'll be followed by Don Berg, Stephanie Shea, and Dennis McDonough, who will be speaking about a new organization, Steele County Indivisible. We hope that you stay with us for both segments, and we would also like to remind you that if you have any people or any events that you would like to have highlighted on Oatana Today, please let us know by giving us an email at oatanatoday at charter.net or by calling Leanne Alt, our show's producer, at 390-5751. And now we're going to take a quick break for some messages from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back with Nancy. Please stay with us. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. When using a fire extinguisher, we suggest using the pass system. Pull the pin at the top of the extinguisher that keeps the handle from being accidentally pressed. Aim the nozzle toward the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to discharge the extinguisher. If you release the handle, the discharge will stop. Sweep the nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire. After the fire appears to be out, watch it carefully since it may reignite. If you have the slightest doubt about whether or not to fight the fire, get out and close the door behind you. This has been a safety message from the Oatana Fire Department. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Oatana Foundation. Your generosity has made Oatana a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Oatana Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. I'm Nancy Ness, inviting you to attend the 23rd Annual Hometown Sampler Concert, benefiting the Steel County Food Shelf. Hometown Sampler performances will be held at the Little Theater of Owatonna on Friday, March 3rd at 7 p.m., Saturday, March 4th at 3 and 7 p.m., and Sunday, March 5th at 2. Come enjoy the musical talents of the Gogs, Bad Tangerines, Hot and Bothered, and Mile 5 Band. Admission to the Hometown Sampler is your generous cash or food donation at the door. All proceeds help the Steele County Food Shelf provide basic food for your neighbors in need. Help feed hungry people and enjoy a great concert at the same time. No one in Steele County should go to bed hungry. Please be a part of this year's Hometown Sampler. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show. This is uh, now uh, a segment on the Steele County Food Shelf with Nancy Ness, our Executive Director of the Food Shelf. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Pete. Nancy? You're new to the position, new to the organization. How's it going? It's going great, I think. <laughs> um, there's been so much to learn, um, so many changes for me personally, and uh, a lot of people to meet, mm -hmm. a lot of reacquaintances with folks that I ha used to work with, mm -hmm. and um, it's just been wonderful getting to know our clients, mm -hmm. getting to know our staff, mm -hmm. and our board, working with our board. Mm -hmm. Um, and now here's Minnesota Food Share Campaign yeah. Month, and we're jumping right in with yeah. both feet. Th you were not uh, allowed to uh, 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 crawl and then walk. And then <laughs> no. there was, you know, come and I'll get busy, get running. It's been busy since day one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, you know, I guess that's a good thing. It is. You it's know, been for, great. Right, right. Um, when, when you uh, interviewed, you had, you know, certain expectations uh, thus far. How have those expectations been uh, met for you? Uh, they've been exceeded. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that the board had asked me to do was to put in a new database that had mm. to be in January 1st. Mm. So that was a huge project that we put in and the volunteers did great with it and our clients did well. So mm -hmm. um, that's been good. We also implemented the Meals in Motion program, which we can talk about as yes, well. Um, and that's been a really interesting experience too mm. for us. A Wonderful. lot of learning for us. Yeah. And we've already, I know, highlighted the Hometown Sampler, which is a, you know, a great fundraiser for the food shelf, and, uh, and that's upcoming. In fact, uh, this weekend we're Just going to be having that, and so I'm sure you're looking forward to that. Too. In a couple days, yeah, yes. Yeah. I know. I'm so excited. Yeah, excellent. Um, 
we, we talked before the show that, you know, uh, and we, t we talked in terms of homelessness and in hunger, and is that, you know, it's, it's one of, these are problems that just don't seem to ever want to go away. Uh, and if anything... It would be great. Yeah. If we didn't have clients, that would be a wonderful thing. If we had to shut our doors. I don't, I don't know how that can happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the challenges that we all face, not just house or food, but housing mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. in Steele County. And mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of residents that are in need. And um, as I mentioned, the Meals in Motion program, we're finding now there are a lot of elderly that mm -hmm. had not been served before. Mm -hmm. So we're finding the need is even greater than what we had anticipated. Mm -hmm. right. And that's, and I guess I was gonna, that's where I was going to go with that I, whole idea that instead of it seem, seemingly to get less, it seems like it gets greater. It does. Year after year after year. Yes. And uh, so but thankfully you are there. Yeah, I'm glad we're there too. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad yeah. we're there. I've heard some stories that would break your heart. Mm. And um, there have been so many people that are grateful that we're there. And, you know, it's just our job to do the best that we can to provide them with the food that they need to help get them through. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the people who participate in um, um, receiving the benefit of the food shelf are, are people who have to meet some standard. Yes, it's a guidelines based on 200% of poverty rate. Okay. So if their income is less than that, mm -hmm. then they qualify. And currently the poverty rate is it somewhere? It is based on how many people are in your household. Oh, okay. So it's about 23000 for one person. For one person. Yes, so right. if you make more than that annually, uh -huh. you can qualify for okay. our services. Right. And what yep. sorts of things will a person um, receive from the food shelf? Uh, if once they've been deemed qualified? Well, they will get a 10-day supply if they come to our brick-and-mortar mm -hmm. facility mm -hmm. on Oakdale. Mm -hmm. um, so it's cereals and breads and meats, mm -hmm. proteins, dairy, mm -hmm. those kinds of things, vegetables, vitamin A. So we try and really have a nu nutritious pack of food that we can give them. Yes. Now, with the Meals in Motion program, the qualifications are the same, mm -hmm. um, but we give them a five day supply of food right. twice a month. Okay. So we go see them. And then at the same time, we also offer fresh fruits and vegetables. We're trying to make sure that mm -hmm. we can have those every day for sure. people that, to come. So they've always got some fresh fruits and vegetables available. So obviously, you're not getting you know, fresh fruits and vegetables at this time of the year around here. You're not going to be getting anything you know, fresh picked from the garden, but um, you do have suppliers coming from where? Rochester, mainly. Yep, right. Channel One. Channel uh, One. Yep. We also have some local donations from the stores here in town, okay. from Bushel Boy as well. Uh, so we try and keep a pretty nice supply on uh, hand. That's great. Mm -hmm. So obviously you have all of the infrastructure that you need, uh, things that keep things frozen or uh, at least cool in, in the facility as well, shelving and so forth. And yes. plenty of people to, um, uh, to help get the boxes put together for folks when they come in. Well, it's always a challenge, I think, to make sure we have the correct number of volunteers. And with this new program for the Meals in Motion, um, we're finding that there's a little, there's more challenges than what we had anticipated. Mm. We're learning as we go, of course. Sure. Um, so we're always looking for volunteers. Okay, excellent. Yes. Um, how many days a week is the shelf open? It's open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. Saturday mornings only, otherwise we're open from 9 o'clock until 5.30 on Monday and Wednesday and 3.30 on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Any time of those hours, anyone who, can, who wants to make a donation of food and or cash can do so? They sure can and okay. would be much appreciated. Right. And I would assume that um, donations uh, are tax deductible? Yes, they are. Okay. So and proper paperwork will be given to anyone who would uh, mm -hmm. make that kind of a donation. Yes. What are some of the challenges that you're, you're, you're seeing now appear and emerge that you know that, you know that you're going to have to spend some time on? Well, um, one of the missions of the Still County Food Shelf is to help mitigate the reasons why people use our services. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very, it's a very wonderful mission. Mm -hmm. I think it's very difficult to try and establish a program that mm -hmm. helps to mitigate that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of my biggest challenges coming up will be to try and figure out ways to help mitigate those reasons mm -hmm. why. But, you know, and that, that brings to mind, you know, the word education. Um, besides obtaining uh, food uh, products, is there any type of education that is offered to people who 
you know, might need to, to have a, a better understanding of, you know, of, of, let's say, nutrition and about, you know, what foods to eat and so forth? We do work with the Minnesota Extension Office here in Owatonna, and um, actually it's Andrea Kronbach. She will do um, skills training on mm -hmm. cooking and nutrition, so she's a great asset to us. Mm -hmm. If we had a refer or if we had a... Um, kitchen. Yeah. We would be able to do training on cooking classes for our clients as well. So hopefully someday in the future right. we can have a kitchen facility that will allow us to do that because we would certainly love to be able to have that opportunity. I'm sure. And, and that, that does speak to this whole idea of, of space. Yes. The, the food shelf has been in its current facility for a number of years. Um, how do you see that as facilitating your growth uh, plan? We're getting tight, okay. <laughs> especially with the new program coming on. We had to bring in more food. Mm -hmm. um, it requires additional refrigeration and freezer space. Um, we were kind of packed before. Now mm -hmm. it's even more so. So we're kind of bulging at the seams a little sure. bit. You're, and, and you're kind of in a co-location environment with the uh, Steel County uh, clothesline. We are. Which, of course, is nice for, for patrons. Uh, but at some point in time, maybe there's going to have to be a departure of, you know, down the line of going into, as you say, a larger facility so that you can do the things that you really want to do. It would really be ideal if all of the, or many of the um, programs throughout Steel County that helped our Steel County residents could be located in an mm -hmm. area that's condensed into one mm -hmm. location. Okay. If you were to consider the, um, you know, the program, you know, year long, uh, are there times that, 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 um, uh, you get close to running out? I mean, where you find that you just don't have the resources to give to people? Or well, that, not in my tenure, okay. <laughs> not, not that I've been there. Um, we do, it is challenging to make sure that we have fresh fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. And um, so we do the best that we can to ensure that we sure. have that. Sure. But we are a little bit limited on the things that we can order and when we order. So mm -hmm. um, it's a challenge, but I think yeah. we're doing fine. Right. So as we uh, come to the close of our, of our time here, um, what sorts of things would you like uh, our people uh, who are viewing us uh, to know uh, and, and how you would like them to participate? Well, first of all, come to the, our event this weekend. It's so exciting for the Hometown Sampler. It's Friday, Saturday. There's two shows on Saturday and another on Sunday afternoon. Excellent. So, um, gosh, come and support yeah. the Steel County Food Shelf and your neighbors as well. Right. Um, if you have an opportunity to volunteer, yeah. we can always use volunteers as well. Excellent. And, yes. if, and if during the course of the year there's some extra food on the shelf, it's uh, well within date. I suppose we have to be a little bit careful about the date uh, we, dating on, on goods. Right. Uh, bring those things out. You'll be happy to take those. We will. Yeah. We will. And we will make sure they get on the table of someone that needs it. That's what, I like that idea, on the table for someone who needs mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here. Thank and you, to Pete. help us with that. We'll have you back again, I know, down the line to see how things are going. Sounds great. And, uh, and best wishes for the weekend and, and as, uh, as well as going forward. Thank you, Pete. Thanks. Talk again. And thank you for being with us. We're going to now take a bit of a break and we'll uh, have some pre-recorded sponsor messages and then we'll be back with Don, Stephanie and Dennis. Stay with us. Hi, my name is Ryan Gillespie with Bremer Bank Mortgage. By trusting your home loan needs to Bremer Bank, you are guaranteed a personalized, straightforward and honest experience from application to closing. We look forward to guiding you through your next home purchase or refinance. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Since 1988, the Owatonna Area Business Development Center has been the part of the success of many area businesses. The center leases office space and manufacturing space and offers on-site business consulting. The Owatonna Area Business Development Center is in business to help your business be a success. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. 
Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead & Company, Certified Public Accountants. We support the Owatonna Today Show. Well, welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. With me in studio are three members of a new organization in Steele County called the Steele County Indivisible Group. Don Berg, Stephanie Shea, and Dennis McDonough are with us today to talk about this new group. And welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I'm just all ears. I want to know about what you're, <laughs> what you're up to and what's going on and why and all the rest of it. Uh, we will fill this time, I'm, I know, with, uh, with good information. But f let's first talk about Steel County Indivisible. And I'm going to just kind of throw it open to whomever wants to take a, a shot at introducing the okay. organization. Go ahead. Well, the organization started as a result of the Women's March that happened on January 21st. Mm. As you know, that um, Women's March started in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. Many other places in the country and in the world took part in the Women's March, and so did Don and I. Dennis didn't know about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, we sponsored a bus, or we didn't sponsor it. People paid for a bus ride up mm -hmm. to St. Paul. Um, there were about 25 of us on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, and probably and it, about 10 more from this community. Right, that went on their own. Yeah. Because they didn't know about the bus. Sure. And after we participated in the rally, which was fantastic, mm -hmm. um, men, women, children, people in wheelchairs, mm -hmm. um, on the ride home we said, you know, we can't just let this stop here. Mm -hmm. It can't be a one-shot deal. Mm -hmm. We need to do something else. Mm -hmm. And so amongst us, um, we found out different things that were going on. One of them was something called Indivisible. Mm -hmm. And it was a group of people that put together a plan for how to um, make really good um, impact on things that, were, that we had concerns about, which included you know, contacting your congressman, contacting your U.S. senators, um, our group, Steele County has decided not only do we want to pay attention to what's going on nationally, but we want to pay attention to what's going on at the state level and even the county level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're really talking about an advocacy organization. Yes, right? absolutely. It's a grassroots. And, and of course, at the, at, yeah. at the very core is what sort of advocacy is it that you are planning to, 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 to do? Well, I think the Women's March, um, from there, mm -hmm. we decided to form. And Dennis, your, um, your viewpoint in uh, well, coming with us. Yes, um, you know, I heard about the Women's March a little bit and I didn't pay much attention to it. And I'm thinking, well, it's, you know, the election's over. It's, this is too late. Mm -hmm. And then I, I watched some news segments and I saw it on Facebook and I, and I was kind of blown away. But this was a worldwide thing, mm -hmm. you know. And then, of course, you're thinking, well, that's, that's really awesome, but what's next? You know, mm -hmm. where does it? Where does it go from here? And then I heard about Steel County Indivisible, and I'm thinking, well, this is a way to get involved at a grassroots level that can keep this movement going, you know, and, and make changes that we are looking for and, and represent ourselves and, and contact our senators and congressmen and, and, and um, get involved. It, I know it started from the Women's March, but it's not anyone could be involved you know it's very open to anybody so all right now you talk about changes right Let, let's consider some of those things that you believe need to be changed in mm -hmm. terms of the of the, you, you have a kind of a, man, a a manifesto a kind of a you know a, some bullet points as to the things that you really want to become involved in well i um, we follow the unity principles from the women's mm -hmm. march um, we also follow the indivisible guidelines. The guidelines are more of a process mm -hmm. of how we contact our um, Congress people mm -hmm. of what actions we need to take. But the changes, we're really looking at the unity principles or changes mm -hmm. that the Women's March talked about. And some of those are um, like the LGBT rights, mm -hmm. immigration rights, um, workers' rights, mm -hmm. and I think a real big one there is living wages. Mm -hmm. 
You know, we're really looking at how can we affect um, living wages, the changes in making sure that people have living wages so we don't rely on all of our other um, uh, nonprofit organizations that give service to sure. people. Sure. Um, so in other words, like the minimum wage issue. Yes. Might possibly be a, a minimum a wage yeah. that is a living wage. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, we also are looking at environmental uh, rights and justice, and really, the, the our whole organization really comes down to peace and justice, mm -hmm. and sometimes those are uh, contrary, mm -hmm. but we do things in peaceful ways. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at, um, you know a lot of disorderly kinds of things. We're looking at how can we bring attention to these issues in a way that um, more people can, can rally around them. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have several things going on right now. We sure. have action teams. Okay. And when people come to our meetings, the, they form some action teams. We've been writing postcards like crazy mm -hmm. to um, our, our Congress people, local and um, state and national. Mm -hmm. And it's having an impact all yes. around the country. You can see it. Yes. Right. We attended um, a town hall meeting with Tim Waltz. Mm -hmm. We've requested town hall meetings and uh, we haven't seen anything yet. Mm -hmm. um, our organization is one of about 6,000 indivisible groups. And right now, even NPR has a segment every, um, every evening, Monday through Thursday at 7, I believe, called Indivisible. Mm -hmm. And it's interviewing and, and discussing with groups like ours of what's going on. Mm -hmm. How can you impact change? Mm -hmm. What can we do um, when you disagree? Yeah. Are, are we are we uh, moving in the direction of looking at things from a liberal slash conservative uh, perspective? Is that there might be there might be people who will say, yeah, well, you know, those are all well and good, except for you know they don't necessarily meet the test of of an ideology, or they're ideologically not as as um, as um, appropriate as what what I would think as an example as an individual. Is, is one that, one of the that? things that we emphasize at our meetings that all are welcome, mm -hmm. that we have many voices, we don't all agree on every issue. Mm -hmm. um, I would say we would call ourselves progressive. Okay. I know that conservative, liberal usually, you know, makes people want to yeah. do that. But it's been really gratifying going to the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, our first meeting, there were eight people. The next meeting, there were 22 people. Mm -hmm. The next meeting, there was 30 people. Um, and the other part about that, Pete, was that they weren't all the same people coming each time. There was like 10 or 15 new people. And people are looking around the table and go, wow, this feels so good to know that there's other people mm -hmm. in our town sure. that feel the way that we do. Right. You know, it's, it, there has to have been a groundswell. There has, to, there has had to have been um, a kind of a, a rumbling or something that was occurring you know, prior to all of this that has you know, brought this to... Well, to here, to to mm -hmm. Steel County, right. um, and it's been on people's minds maybe for some time. Would you say? Right. Yeah. And Obviously, I, the I election made you know recently it started it, become it. More. crystallized it. The, the yes. tone, yes. the tone yeah. was. I, I've it never got seen us off our. Like it, you yeah. know, and it's like yeah. this is shocking. Yeah. So. You know, they say in, in, in my day, of old days, I guess, uh, all politics is local. You know, and mm -hmm. what you're really doing is bringing forth some things that wouldn't necessarily have been started on the national level, but now they're becoming very local, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. How, yeah. how do you see when we talk about government then, uh, as as you move into you know more uh, you know higher levels of sophistication, doing the things you're going to be doing? How, how does local government, municipal government, you know, county government, city government play into what it is that you're 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 planning to do? Well, I think um, that is probably our next um, step, mm -hmm. is to become more involved in our local government. Um, we do have a couple of members from the Human Rights Committee uh, in our group, mm -hmm. in the Indivisible group, which seems only natural. We are talking about human rights um, ideas mm -hmm. and changes. So I, I think that we will be seeing 
more mm -hmm. um, changes or at least awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be attending more of uh, those meetings. Um, we are just getting organized yeah. right now. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's you know obviously understood that um, you know, you've got to start somewhere. And, that's and, right. And, and, you're, and you're doing that. Um, how will you meet with the challenge that, that it's a polarizing group? How, how will you deal with that? Well, I don't believe it is. It's, it's yeah. um, like, like Stephanie had said, we, you know, we all have different ideas, but we, and we, we can come together with one voice and, you know, um, we accept anyone. Sure, yeah. sure. We don't so, intend for it to be polarizing <laughs> at so all. So it's really common good. You're, you're looking at it from a common good right. perspective right. is the way I would, mm -hmm. what I hear you say. And I would like to think things. that we can be educational for people yeah. because many people don't pay attention. Um, we know we hear a lot on the news about fake news. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. hear recently about uh, the press, the media is the enemy of the people. It isn't the enemy of the people. We need to be able to trust the you know, regular news sure. sources and people yeah. need to... Um, educate themselves about what is real and what is not. Okay. Where do you meet? We've been meeting at the public library okay. in the Ganey Room. room. Right. Our next meeting is going to be on March 7th, Tuesday, uh, from noon to 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So if there's people out there that are interested um, and could come on their lunch hour if they're working. Yes. Um, we've also been meeting in the evenings. Yes. Um, we've actually been meeting every week. Um, that might change. Right. And March 8th is, um, we're holding a rally right. in Central Park. Oh, okay. It's called the International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be across um, nations. Mm -hmm. And it is a peaceful rally to come together. We're going to have speakers, some music. It'll be from 5 to 6 in Central Park. Mm -hmm. And everyone is welcome sure. to come. Okay, very well. You're leaderless at this point. You don't have, let's say, an executive or anybody like that, right? Well, we have a leadership team, and we believe in collaborative leadership. Okay. Not in just one person or a hierarchy kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. We take so, turns running turns, meetings. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Well, that's good. It, it builds the, the base, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is it was very interesting to know what's going on, and uh, I guess we will look forward to mm -hmm. seeing and hearing more about... Uh, about um, uh, the organization and certainly the uh, uh, the upcoming event in Central Park, and I'm sure we'll have you back to talk more about uh, about the uh, the organization still calling. That would be great. Visible. Yeah, and thanks for being here. Thank really. you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. This wishes. is really yeah. good. And thank you for being with us uh, uh, today. We're going to now uh, uh, take a pause, and uh, we will uh, have some community announcements, and then we will move on with our close. Cedar Valley Services, located at the corner of Rose and Grove in Owatonna, provides an array of services for people with disabilities in Steele County. CVS thanks the entire community, especially our business customers, for supporting us in Owatonna for 43 years. Thank you from CVS. Welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. And now we will have our community announcements. St. Paul's Episcopal Church on the corner of Mill, and, Mill Street and Cedar Avenue presents its annual Lenten speaker series, The Things We Treasure. Wednesdays starting on Ash Wednesday, March 1st at, from 1210 to 1230. The event is free. Uh, lunch afterwards is $6 and all proceeds benefit the Steele County Free Clinic and the Crisis Resource Center. The Steele County Historical Society invites children pre-K and grades K through 6 for History Detectives Interactive Children's Programming on Thursday, March 2nd at 9 a.m. and at 6.30 p.m. at the Steele County History Center. The program is free and open to all members of the community. March History Detectives will highlight the 1917 Fun Day 
held in Oatana after a series of blizzards snowed in the city. The Hometown Sampler Concert Series, a fundraiser for the Steele County Food Shelf, will be held at Little Theater Auditorium on Friday, March 3rd at 7, Saturday, March 4th at 3 and at 7, and Sunday, March 5th at 2 p.m. Admission is a cash or food donation to the Steele County Food Shelf. The community is invited to a special Owatonna Hospital Healing Arts Program reception where you can meet the artists on Tuesday, March 14th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. at the Owatonna Hospital. The new artwork is on view now through the end of June. The works of Gail Cole, painting, Reverend Jack Dahl, watercolor, Candy Keene, photography, and April Malfers, glass, and Sarah Whitmont, Schlager, painting, will be on display. And that's what we have for you today. We look forward to having you here on Friday when Michelle Redmond from Big Brothers and Sisters and Kristen Haberman from Owatonna Business Women will be with us. So we look forward to having you back then. Enjoy the rest of the day.